Joining us now, former Republican strategist and veteran of the Mitt Romney and George W. Bush presidential campaign, Stuart Stevens. He's now a senior advisor for the Lincoln Project and author of the new book entitled The Conspiracy to End America, Five Ways My Old Party is Driving Our Democracy to Autocracy. Stuart, thank you for being with us. Uh, so many questions to ask you. Why don't we just start with the obvious one about how a party, uh, how a party turns so inward on itself that it can't even upside down, can't even run the House of Representatives. Yeah, I mean it's extraordinary, isn't it, Joe. Um, you think about it, the party that its most consistent trait was to be an opponent to the Soviet Union, to be the main antagonist right. of the Soviet Union and Russia, and that now that group of conservative Republicans is the heart of the pro-Putin uh, element in American politics. You know, I, I think the problem is you, you can't unify a party unless there is a governing philosophy. You can't stand up in front of your colleagues and say it's really important that we elect a speaker so we can get about the business of what? Uh, helping stabilize the world, uh, taking a role in, uh, Ameri in the world that America normally does. They don't care about any of this. They're, they're up there saying we need to choose a leader so we can investigate Hunter Biden's laptop more thoroughly? Um, yeah, but, I mean, Stuart, Stuart, where are they getting that from? I mean, you, you, you look at the Jim Jordan vote, it's yeah. a perfect reflection of what's happened over the past seven years. You've got people who hate Jim Jordan and who hate Donald Trump, uh, who voted for him publicly, voted against him privately, uh, which leads to something you talk about in your book about the use of propaganda. Um, we, we have, uh, Mika and I have friends who are really bright, brilliant. Uh, they've got, you know, master's degrees, they've got law degrees, and you talk to them and they, they, they spit back January 6th conspiracy theories. It was all Nancy Pelosi's fault and it was a setup. You talk about Donald Trump stealing nuclear secrets from the White House and they talk about a weaponized DOJ. If he can do it to them, he can, if the Justice Department can do it to him, they can do it to anybody. These are reasonable, rational people in most aspects of their lives, but politically just disconnected from reality. How, how, how did that happen? Not just to the people in Congress, but to our former party from coast to coast. Well, look, you know, I blame the party because these people that we know had they come out and spoken the truth about Donald Trump, what they really knew in their hearts, had it started with the Muslim ban in, in December 15th, had they, uh, 2015, had they just said this, what they were telling right. you and what they were telling everybody, instead um, they collapsed for Donald Trump. They made this terrible deal for power. And somehow Donald Trump and his sort of animal instincts uh, sensed that the Republican Party really didn't believe in anything except power. And if I will give you power, you will endorse me, somebody that has ostensibly stood for everything that you oppose. And this is how you end up. Um, every time the party's had a chance to turn against Donald Trump, it's turned toward Donald Trump, including the last time when they could have just voted uh, to convict a guy. If you're not going to vote to convict a guy that sends people into your office that tries to kill you, I mean, you think it's going to be some point yeah. of principle they're going to stand to? And it's a historic collapse. I don't really think we've seen anything like it, uh, certainly in modern American no. history. Stuart, good morning. Congrats on the book. To pick up on that point there, there have been so many off-ramps. You would think an attack on the United right. States Capitol, an attempted coup against the government would get people out. What about taking nuclear secrets back to Mar-a-Lago? Maybe that would give you a way out. He's not even in office anymore. You could walk away from him. So what is your sense of why Republicans never do? and the cost of speaking out about Donald Trump. I'm thinking about somebody like Governor Brian Kemp in Georgia, who is a conservative Republican in the sense that we used to understand them, and right. has at least said, I supported Donald Trump, but he's lying about what happened in Georgia. It's complete garbage and nonsense, and we're moving forward. We're not gonna look backward. Why is, or aren't there more Republicans who can at least say that? 
You know, um, I, I think that question's going to be studied for a long time in history. It's a great question. Um, it probably at the root of this has to do with what's happened to the Republican Party and the way that it's refused to change to a changing America. 85% of America, 85% uh, uh, of Trump's coalition is white in a country that is 60% white and less. Um, the majority of Americans 16 and under are non-white. We are headed to becoming a minority majority country. And I think they look at this and they don't know how to appeal to these voters. And we, when I was still in the party, we never did the hard work that was necessary to appeal to these voters. So a lot of it is fear. They see this country that they don't understand, that democracy has now become their enemy because there's not enough of them to win a majority of the vote. So you have this increasing minority rule phenomenon. And I think it's extraordinarily toxic to a civil debate. Um, the idea of compromise, I mean, at the root of democracy is what? You have to be willing to lose. And you have to be willing to admit you were wrong, which is the essence of a, a democratic civil society. And both of those have become really just, you know, shooting offenses inside the Republican Party. Stuart, the fear, the fear that uh, many people feel about what's going on around them yeah. is understandable. If you talk to them at a grocery store, a gas station, if you talk to them, you understand their fear. It might be unreasonable, but it's there. The fear that politicians have for Donald Trump is something entirely different, mm -hmm. though. What do you attribute that fear to? I think it's cowardice. I think what we're seeing is that courage is contagious and cowardice is contagious. And cowards love company. If everybody is doing this, it must not be make me look like a coward. And how many people do we know, Mike, that we know are good people that are in the Senate and the House who, you know, they all they had to do was get their comm shop to put out a statement saying <laughs> congratulating the president elect the United States. In the defense of democracy, that's a pretty low bar, right? They're not charging a machine gun nest. They're not like out my dad three years fighting in the South Pacific. And they fail that moment. And once it became acceptable to do that once you know Mitch McConnell doesn't uh, direct the votes to convict him but then goes out and gives a speech why he should have convicted him there's just nothing there in the party and I, I think it's going to be studied for a long time but we have to live in the reality and I think that the reality is that this party isn't going to change until they are defeated because fear as you know very well from all your days in politics is the best teacher in politics and that's what's going to drive them Stuart, um, I'm curious uh, about, you talk about the Republican Party's failure to a, a, appeal to black and brown people in America. Let's talk about women for a minute. There are no women candidates for speaker. And by the way, all of the candidates for speaker, this is amazing, all of the candidates for speaker voted against guaranteeing the right to w of women to birth control. They all voted against reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act. And they all voted against trying to codify some kind of equality when it comes to wage discrimination based on gender. What is going on in the Republican Party around women? Those three votes are so out of step with America. I, I bet 90% of America wants to guarantee birth control for women. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is happening on that front in the Republican Party? Yeah, there's sort of a pattern there, isn't it? You know, I, I think this is one of the reasons um, that the Republican Party is drawn to Putin. Look at look inside of Russia. How many women do you see in power in Russia? Um, as Putin says, there's no gay people in Russia. And there's a sense that this is a world that is changing, that we can stop time, where men, predominantly white men like us, are in power. And we don't want to deal with this changing reality. And, you know, I, I think it's increasingly unlike America. Um, you, you end up with there's five senators in the history of America that have been confirmed to the uh, Supreme Court with senators representing a minority of the country. And all five of those are on the court today. And I think that that is part of the, the schism here. You have larger states that are getting larger and smaller states, by uh, contrast, um, have the same amount of power in the United Senate and that creates a disparity. Um, you know, I, I think there is some hopefulness. I don't think younger voters feel this way. And Joe Biden's best group in 20 were younger voters. Um, and I, I think when you see how they're turning out, they don't feel this way. And they look at this and it's just completely out of touch. 
And it's one of the reasons, if I ran the Democratic Party, I would wake up every day trying to get in the culture war because they're winning these culture wars. You know, how, how did it work out when they took on uh, Nike and Colin Kaepernick? Nike made $9 billion. They took on the uh, NASCAR over the Confederate flag. You know, the Republican Party in a culture fight with NASCAR. NASCAR won. It's just a, a sense that they are not in touch with where America is. And that creates fear. And one thing that Republicans had, we at least like to believe that we had and present, was an optimism. Mm -hmm. And that you could yeah. embrace the future. That there was some, that we're flawed right. now, we're all flawed. But there's some sort of sweeping vision that could unite us. And that has been completely lost. And it's, it's an angry party now and a party of grievance. And there's a limit to how appealing that is. It really is. The new book is entitled The Conspiracy to End America. Five ways my old party is driving our democracy to autocracy. Stuart Stevens, thank you very much. Congratulations on the book. We appreciate thank your you. sharing it.